During the total eclipse, the sun erupted, we've got a comet, we had an earthquake, we had a shockwave interact with the Earth, and here are the times of the eclipse, began at 1333 Universal Time, ending at 1853. So the entire event from start to finish was about 5 hours and 20 minutes, but it's what occurred in about 90 minutes time during the eclipse. That was actually quite rare. There's the shock wave that impacted the Earth at 1500. It was right around 1501 Universal Time. Check this out. See the shock wave right there? That's at its peak. This is just prior to the large CME solar flare, 1501 Universal Time. And remember, the earthquake occurred at, go back to the earthquake page, the earthquake occurred at 1520 Universal Time. So 17 minutes after the shock wave, in the same general area, we have a 6.0 magnitude earthquake. So there's the shock wave that preceded the large CME slash solar flare that erupted off of the sun. In that area, right there in 17 minutes time, we had the shock wave that created a blackout and a 6.0 magnitude earthquake all during a total eclipse. And there's the time, 1520 Universal. The shock wave was at 1501 maximum time right there again during the eclipse, the last eclipse of 2020. And you can see right here as the eclipse is underway, it's 1528 universal time. That was eight minutes after the 6.0 earthquake right there in Chile. Here's the solar flare slash CME. And again, this was as the eclipse was beginning to peak. Right there is when this thing really peaked around 16, actually 1620, 1630. But you can see it coming off of there with, with a pretty good amount of force. This was during totality. Here's slow motion of the eclipse, and you're going to see not only the solar flare, CME, also there's a comet that went flying into this, right into the CME. And there's the CME right there, and you're going to see a comet here in just a moment. More than likely, some of that energy is Earth-directed. Here's the sun diving comet that went right into the CME, and this again was during pretty much totality of the eclipse. The comet's right down here. Watch. It's a sun diving comet. We've seen them before, but they're actually kind of rare. See right there? You don't see them very often. And for that to occur during a total eclipse is actually kind of rare. The odds of that are pretty slim, really. So to recap this series of events, during the eclipse, in about 90 minutes time, we had a shock wave interact with the shields of planet Earth, creating a temporary radio blackout over South America, where the total eclipse was viewable from, followed by a 6.0 magnitude earthquake, which was followed by a large solar flare slash CME that more than likely is at least partially Earth-directed, that was impacted itself by a sun-diving comet, all within about 90 minutes during the last total eclipse of 2020 on December 14th, 2020. Shockwave at 1501 Universal Time. 6.0 magnitude earthquake at 1520 Universal Time. Solar flare slash CME 1636 at its peak coming off of the southeastern limb of the sun. Sun diving comet at 1648 going right into the large CME. All of this occurring in less than two hours during the final total eclipse of the sun of 2020. And we've got the grand alignment coming up on December 21st of Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn. And don't be surprised if we see some earthquake activity just prior to the alignment on December 21st of Jupiter and Saturn, the gas giants, when they align in the southwestern sky, looking like one large star. Don't be surprised if we see some earthquake activity, large earthquake activity, prior to that alignment on December 21st. Thanks for watching. Have a super day, and be safe out there.